And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Just double check so everything's fine. There we go. Great. So, um, spawning in a ball right position. Down one game. Really wants to take this one. Otherwise, he's out of the Ghost Racer 2 Monday. Playing for my insanity. It is the per uh, not purple. It's the pink Zerg, Dana. Oh, God. Colors. Colors. And that's his opponent spawning top left position. Playing for Alien Invasion. The Blue Pros up one game. Looking to take the entire series. It's Chubbs. So, Dana vs. Chubbs once again in the second game. Now on Belsha Vestige. I just love this. And oh my god, I'm really sorry. That was bad. There we go. Great. So, uh, Dana, don't freak out by, of this, by the way. If you haven't seen it already, a uh, few guys who are a bit new to StarCraft, this is a really nice move that, you know, became more and more popular the older StarCraft 2 got. Um, it's called extractor checking. Basically, you just get uh, 10 drones out of 10 supply. You make an extractor, so it goes down to 9 again. Make an extra drone while you're making the overload. So you can get that extra one drone, so you're at 11 out of 10 supply. Really cool thing. If you haven't tried already, try it because it gives that small, small edge. Really fun to do as well. Nice uh, micro thing you can do in the beginning, except for stacking your workers, of course, on the middle line. So let's just get some water as well because... <coughs> Wow, I can't even drink water properly. It's harder than you might think <laughs> to drink water. <laughs> um, right, so my throat is just uh, dying from solar casting at times, so always good to bring some water. Anyhow, we do see a double 15 uh, gas from Chubbs going to open up for some really nice gas timings if he choose to. And uh, Dana, meanwhile, he's uh, going for the hatch first. Really nice. Uh, something we see more and more sucks do nowadays. Going for a hatch first. A bit more greedy. But uh, a really nice small thing you can do. And here we go and go a nice drone going to scout for Croxies. I do believe this should not be another hat tree, is it? Oh my god, Dana against a Protoss is going to go for double hatch before pool into gas into pool. Oh my god. So basically, this is the most greedy thing you could ever, ever do. I mean, double hatch before pool is something you can joke about, but you almost never do it. Oh my god, this is great. And I just love greedy play, I must just say that. And also, gas before pool, you just delay your pool even more to get the earlier gas, to get the earlier speed out. More tech, as greedy as you just can be. Wonderful. Dana going hardcore, he knows his stuff. And Chubbs, hasn't scouted this is the main thing he hasn't scouted at all just look at that nothing on the map for chubbs and he isn't even scouting with this probe he's going to build the wall off and when no sugglings come uh, arrives at base he's going to be like hmm that was odd didn't you make any sugglings at all uh so wow yeah dana already mind gaming really hardcore and if chubbs doesn't recognize this in time dana will have the most epic advantage you could ever think of sure Chubbs did an expansion, but this is extremely greedy. So let's see what uh, Dane is going to do about this. He's, um, or rather with this, not about this, he really likes this. So he's getting his speed out, really nice timing, only uh, getting one gas as well. Um, one in the gas as well, so that is uh, really, really nice because he will try to get that plus one carapace, I would assume, once again. Uh, since he didn't get the, how do you even say that, pneumatized? I think so, Phnumentai's Carapace, uh, the Overlord speed otherwise, uh, he didn't get that last time, so uh, I, I would assume he is not going to get it again, he's going to get Carapace instead, I do believe, and it didn't work uh, the last time, but this time he'll have so much more income that his uh, timing would be so, so much stronger, and if Chubbs is doing the same thing, I can't really see him succeed, but this time with double sentry, probably not going to be the same thing at all, and we do see the Twilight Council on the way here, and is this where I think it might be? I actually didn't check if he crowned out the module core. Is there a module core out? Yeah, it is. Okay, so I actually didn't pay attention to that because there is a really cool thing I saw. I think with the sentries, you can't really do it, but uh, with the Twilight Console, we sh might see quite an early uh, DT Shrine. It is a possibility, otherwise, a really, really early blink. We're going to see if he gets the blink. Should get it now this second. Yes. So, okay, a really nice blink timing. Uh, it's not what I thought I might see uh, because I I've been reading way too much Team Liquid. Uh, but a blink timing, really nice, gonna crawl that out, he's gonna get a ton more gates and hit a really strong, nice timing out of two bases. And the question is, 
Can Dane actually hold on? Uh, you know, hold on because he doesn't. He hasn't even started his Roach War, and he only has this one spawning pool. And he has not been building any units. Has two circlings. Where are they? One Watchtower each. Has even scouted a bit with the Overlords. Hasn't seen the Twilight Council. Hasn't scouted. Hasn't even seen the extra sentries, which is a really pivotal thing in this game. Because the thing is that the more sentries you see, the more scared you probably should be. Because they have so much utility in these team, in this, not team fights, wow, too much Dota. Uh, no, they have a lot of utility in the big fights, in the huge, uh, huge fights. Also, with these small ramps, so much utility. So often when you see timing, you see a lot of sentries coming out. And you see him just getting so, so many sentries at the moment. How many is he up to right now? Six sentries already, that's nice. And with four more uh, gates, that's going to add up to... Uh, seven gates, so yeah, seven gate blink is going to hit very hard on Dana, and Dana has been droning, droning, and droning like a madman. Sure, he has uh, he has speedlings, sure, and they are really good against stalkers, but stalkers with blink are extremely good. Uh, against uh, speedlings because of the fact that you can blink away, uh, especially if you're really versatile with them. Uh, then you can do have a really nice hard count against uh, speedlings. And right now, do you see Burrow on the way? He's really getting everything. He has hydro disc then as well. I do believe- no, he cancelled it, he cancelled it, okay, he sees, with his circling, uh, I do believe he saw the incoming army, yeah, he did see everything incoming, uh, I'm not sure if he saw every single sentry, that would be huge, so right now he's in panic mode, okay, that would be spine crawlers, he probably should make more, I'm not really sure though, because uh, his opponent might attack in the middle, but right now, getting ready, might try to snipe the Modish call with this, and Chubbs right now, he's making parlance aggressively, while Dana just trying to mass up enough to hold this, and Chubbs is going to attack right into the middle, and does Dana have enough? I don't think so, not at all at this point, trying to make more and more units, he doesn't have the lava though, has to keep on injecting, oh here we go, the slow on the units, great, aggressive force builds, trapping all the roaches, the uh, Sogus trying to do enough damage, but with those blinking stalkers, it's going to be hard to do enough damage. And the Roaches picking off quite a few of those sentries, actually. But a lot of Roaches trapped. These targets are not doing anything to help this battle out. And with those great force fields, it looks like Chubbs is just beating Dana down. But if Dana can hold, though, he'll be in a great position. But Chubbs, right now, getting more and more units. More stalkers right now, not trying to replenish those sentries. Nice pick off by Dana with those uh, sentries. And here we go. Dana from both directions. Not enough uh, Roaches, though. But there is no uh, observer for Chubbs. He cannot see the bird Roaches. Here we go, no bow uh, movement, he will try to trap the uh, stalkers of Chubbs with his roaches, and he's doing some nice amounts of damage, but those roaches are dying left and right, trying to pick up enough, there we go, a few stalkers going down, that's a big, big hit for Chubbs, and look at the supply at the moment, Dana actually pulling ahead his supply, but those roaches are extending quite a bit, he might lose all his roaches, and that is uh, extremely fatal for him if it does, but that's a good burrow. That's a really, really well-placed burrow because of the fact that if Chubbs now leaves this pile and he will kill it with ease. But if he, if it doesn't, Dana will just get more and more units until he can hold this. There is no upgrade advantage for Chubbs. And here we go. Once again, now Dana choosing to pick the fight. He's choosing to attack here. And Chubbs running away. Is Dana overextending? I'm not really sure. I do not think so, though. More stalkers coming into the fray here. Nice blink micro by Chubbs. Let's get some more health bar. Sorry for that. Uh, trying to blink away once again, but the Stalkers are not really enough at this point. Dana pushing his opponent back, now getting the high list and a really hard count to the uh, Stalkers. And Chubbs trying to blink away, but the Roach is killing off Stalker after Stalker. And GG, Dana takes the second game with a really...